Hello everyone! I'm really excited to do this view tutorial with you guys and I've wanted to do, or I've wanted to start learning view for a while now and I kind of just started taking the initiative and getting really into it and it's so much fun! It's really straightforward and I find especially if you don't know framework already, I would highly suggest picking up view because it's a very straightforward um, framework and really easy to pick up and the documentation's great, the community's great around it, so I would definitely suggest picking up Vue. And if this is your first time learning Vue or the first Vue uh, tutorial you're doing, welcome! And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm doing the Vue to-do list. I already did a React to-do list and I thought it'd be a good comparison of how the two different frameworks compare to each other. So I found after making a React to-do list, making a Vue to-do list, just to compare the two uh, functionalities and how they work was a really good contrast and a good way to kind of understand the two differences. And I know React is similar to Vue in a lot of ways, but I find Vue to be really, I find, I mean, maybe because React was my first uh, framework I learned, but I find Vue to be so much more straightforward and so much more easier to pick up. So I hope it is for you guys as well. And I love React. React's like my, I mean, it's my number one. I can't, I can't change that. And that's reality because I, uh, it was my first one I learned. Vue is so great. So I hope you guys enjoy. If you have any questions, please let me know. Subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you would like to see more of. And ring a bell uh, and come say hi to me on Instagram. And oh, I think someone actually wants to say hi to you guys first. Harry, do you want to say hi? Do you want to say hi? Who's there? Is that you? Hi, Bobs. He's only nine months. He looks way older, but he's only nine months, actually. So um, he seems to want to sit into all of my videos. So I've kind of just, if you see kind of his head popping around, that's Harry. And he uh, he just likes to be kind of close to me wherever I am. So he will, he'll probably be in all these videos. Okay, bye guys, thanks so much, enjoy. Okay, to get started, let's make a new project with Vue. At this point, I'm already assuming that you have uh, Node installed and Vue installed, and so then we will go ahead and CD into our uh, directory that we want to create the folder in. In my case, I'm just gonna do it in desktop. And inside of the folder where you would like to put your Vue project, we're going to do a new Vue instance, and to do so, you can just type Vue, init, and there are different packages that you can use with Vue. For this project, we're going to use the Webpack Simple, uh, Webpack Simple, because it is very straightforward. And I mean, this is a simple project. We don't need to do anything too crazy. Then after you put what kind of project you would like to use with Vue in it, uh, put your project name. So in this case, it will be Vue To-Do List and enter. And we'll wait a sec while this downloads. Uh, for project name and things, you can fill it out. I'm not going to right now. It's not going to, you know, make a difference. Okay, so then now, as you can see, we have our new view to-do list folder. And now let's get started. Okay, once you've navigated inside your project, open up a terminal. I'm in Visual Studio Code, so I'm gonna use the terminal built in. And ensure you are already into your, your project. And then what we are going to do is npm install, which will install all the npm packages to your view project. And we'll wait, and I'm gonna fast forward so you don't have to watch this very slowly. Now that we have done npm run dev and our server's up and running, let's go into source, the source folder, and specifically let's click on app.view, and this is where we're going to be doing um, all of our coding today. We're going to be using the template here, as well as the script for our JavaScript, and style however because right now it is however because right now it's set up for the view kind of home page they have as a standard let's get deleting some of these um, things in the template so let's start by deleting everything inside of the div with the id app and as well inside of your script delete the message and inside of your styling let's delete all the styling now okay perfect now we can get started Okay, to start with inside of our return, in the data area is where you're going to put things such as our new to-do, where the user um, will, it will constantly be changing and it will be where our input form will be kind of connected to our input form. So for example, in this one will be new to-do, which will be an empty string to start with. However, that will change as the user is inputting text into the input uh, tag. As well, let's have a list of existing to-dos which will really be an array of different objects that are uh, the to-dos, and that will be text. And let's say the first one will be get groceries. 
and they will each have an ID so we can uniquely identify them and this will come in handy especially when we will be deleting them as well and enabling that functionality. Let's do run errands. An ID of one. And let's do copy and paste. Let's do walk dog with an ID of two. Okay, great. Now we have some data that we are returning, um, you know, new to do, which we will be filling out and existing to do's, which already exist and will show up on the screen uh, already. Now let's get into the template part of things and let's create a div to start with that will hold everything. Um, I think I'm gonna download Bootstrap actually, so I can put a container here. So for now, I'm just gonna put a class container and then we'll add Bootstrap afterwards to kind of um, make everything look a bit prettier. And then we will do a H1 to have a heading of the to-do list that we're creating. And let's just call this to-do view because you know, it's fun and it rhymes. Okay, so then let's start making an input form. And inside of this input, which is a self-closing tag, we will have a class and we'll just call it input. And this will be for styling purposes. And as well, let's do a V, something called V model. And that will be equal to the, the new to do, new to do. Okay, and a little bit about vModel. So vModel is a form input uh, bindings and it will create two-way bindings on the form input. So basically the input that we have um, or the vModel new to do will be related directly to inside of our data. Uh, we're returning the new to do. Same, um, these two are the exact same. So they're binding them together and uh, they will allow whatever is in our input to be bound. Okay, so moving on, let's create a button for adding the content that we're putting into our input button and inside a button, let's have a class of add button and let's just say add. So we can just add um, the items from our input. And then as well, add won't work right now because they're, um, we haven't created a method for it or a function for it to actually, you know, be triggered and add content or add text to the existing to-do list. We will be creating that in a bit, um, but now at least we have kind of the structure and we can see something on the page. So if we navigate back to our uh, local host 8080, we can see we have to-do view and we have an input form with an at. So you can see, you can say hello and we can click add. It won't add right now, but just so you can kind of see that we have something on screen and I find that easier to work with then after you can kind of see something visu visually and kind of iterate on that. So now let's get the list of existing to-dos to start showing up on our page since we have already created them. And underneath button, let's do a unordered list and we'll put a style on there, of, a class of there of, oh, sorry, actually let's do a style. Let's do style and that will be equal to um, list style type, which will be none. Okay, so then we'll just have kind of like a blank clean list to kind of start with. And then as well inside, let's put li for list. And inside of li, we're going to do, oops, inside of li, we are going to do a something called a v4, which will be equal to uh, to do in existing to do. And a little bit about what this is, is um, a v4 is pretty much like a for loop. It will basically iterate over or render a list of items based on an array. Uh, so for example, in this case, the existing to do array down here, uh, v4 is iterating over it and the to do in existing to do is each individual to do. You can name this pretty much whatever you want. Um, it's just to say each individual item will be getting iterated over in the existing to do array. So then inside of this, oh, and by the way, I know there's a line here, like a red line. It's just my prettier, it's not, um, or my ES link, sorry. It's um, nothing to be worried about. It's not a bug, it's not an error. It's just um, the way I have my dev um, set up. It looks like a little bit scary, but just ignore it. It's really not. So inside of here, let's do span. And in our span tag, let's do 
two curly brackets. Um, in view, I mean, kind of like a slang term or what some people call the two curly brackets is uh, curly mustaches, which I really like. I think it's kind of cool and fun. And actually, before we put anything inside of our span, I wanted to note that inside of to-do, we also want to grab the index of each to-do. As you can see down here, we have the IDs. And the purpose of grabbing each index is really so we can later on when we implement deleting a to-do, we can also um, you know, grab that index and delete the to-do based on the index that um, is in the existing to-do array. So inside a span, let's go i plus one, index plus one, and that will be another two curly uh, mustaches, which is to-do text. And what this is doing is it's taking the to-do item that we have created here. So for each item that's the to-do, we are getting the text from the existing to-do array. So right down here. So this text is from this text down here inside of existing to-do. Okay, so now let's save that and go back to our server and we can see that we have our new list of get groceries, run errands, and walk, walk G-dog. What about just walk dog? Great, so now you can see we have our list formulated and our input and add. There's just no functionality, but that will come next. Let's start creating some functionality. And to do that, let's create some methods. And methods really will are an object that will hold all of our functions that we'll be creating for this uh, to-do list. So inside of methods, let's have a function called add, and this will add um, any of the text that a user puts into the new to-do to add to the to-dos. So add will have, um, will access the existing to-do array. And inside of that, let's push the, let's push some things. Let's push some things. Okay, so let's push the, let's push text and it will be this dot new to-do. And right now what we're doing is pushing the text of the new to-do into the existing to-do array. As well, we would like to do that for ID because we have ID as well. And to do that, in this case, uh, let's do, let's use date. I find that to be an easy one to use. So new date and the value of, and that will um, ensure that we have a unique ID for every different new to-do that we input. The last thing we have to do on here is we would like to, after the user input something into the input form and adds it. Uh, let's clear this dot new to do and set it back to the original um, empty string so they can start fresh and add new things. Lastly, inside a button, we need to start enabling this um, or have an event handler so this button actually will uh, call the add function we just created. Okay, so inside the button, let's add a V on click. Oops, on click and that will be calling the add function. And what Vion click is, is it's an event handler, which will listen to DOM events and run the add function when triggered. Okay, so now as you can see in our view application, we can add something, let's say we have to study. And we add it, and there we go. So now we are able to add different items to our to-do view list, which is really exciting. However, another functionality that'd be really nice to add to it is if we could delete each item. So let's get started and do that. Back inside of our methods, let's add a delete to do function. And that will be accessing this dot existing to do, and we will be splicing the index, so i and at one. So as well, because we're slice, or splicing sorry, the index, we have to pass in the i for index. And then as well, let's create a button for the delete so we can delete each list. So inside of our list underneath span, let's do another button. And this button will be for deleting and the button will have a class for the styling of delete button. And then inside of this button, let's have um, an X and that will symbolize for deleting. As well, we will have another V on click uh, for an event handler. A short form, instead of doing V on and click, we can just do at click, which is a nice short form. And that will be equal to the delete to do uh, function, which we'll be calling, it'll be calling and we'll pass in the index through there as well. 
So now if we navigate back to our to-do list, we can see that our um, list that already exists has a different D, different X's for delete. So we can delete list items. We can add list items, study for exam, oops, add and delete. There you go, there is our to-do view final. I'm going to attach a CSS as well to this, so you can add that in and kind of make it look pretty if you choose to do uh, that with the CSS I provided, or you know, take a challenge and style it yourself. And there you go, these are just the very basics of view. There's so much more to it, and it's extremely exciting to learn, and I find it to be very you know, straightforward once you learn the basics, so continue learning it, and if you have any questions, please let me know.